Okay, we're starting with Ezra Hashem Simon Kuflam and Hey. And now we're shifting to a new subject, and this is the subject of the Averis of the Medina. And this Simon is going to discuss two different Averis, Gili Arias and Shri Domim. Two big Averis. So take a look. Venoidal and Miskav, it's well known, Ki Hema Miusadim, Gam Al Sharhu Averis Kulam. That the Medina is, not just that the Medina is not allowed to exist, like we've been saying up till now, but the Medina is founded on other Averis in the Torah, all the other Averis, Shehem bi Yahar Gvi Yavor, all the Averis that are Yahar Gvi Yavor. And what are they? Avodah Zara, we've been talking about till now, a Kfira, but now we're talking about the other two. Gili Arai, Shushvich Damim. Ukvar Nidfas Migdoyle Eretz Yisrael Al Giyas Habonas. It's already, already been printed, the Isser that the Gedolim of Eretz Yisrael I think the Chazanish on the drafting of girls into the Israeli army uh. that happened in the 1950s. There were protests against it, and the, the Chazanish was the leader of those who said that, Yohar, that it's Yehar Gdal Yavor for a girl to be drafted. Even to a go- even if there were a guy drafting women to the army, in Shat Hashmad, the women would have to give up their lives rather than do it. Okay, so. Ramosha does say this. Okay. Shehu bi Yahar Gvi Yavor bishvil shiro bazeh shehu gilei arayis because they understood the reason why it's Yahar Gvi Yavor is because going to the army for a girl is gilei arayis. Now take a look. I don't. I wasn't able to find the original poster with the signatures of the Chazanish and other people, but I have here on page nine um, another kind of poster that came out in the seventies. Says Gilei Spanish Yahar Gvi Yavor. That uh, in the matzav that were that was that was uh, in, in current then in the 70s they were planning to make a law that every woman has to go to the Israeli army. Interesting that the law would have excluded uh, religious Jews, right? Shazehu, but, but still, this this psak comes out against it. Says Shazehu benigul the psak din shall call gedolei atoyah shapasku shegiyos the tzava who begetter yehar gvi yavor. So saying basically, it doesn't matter if you keep Shabbos or not, if you keep kashrus or not, you can't go to the army. It's yehar gvi yavor. Ve'ein al zed dina the malchus the dina. It's interesting. They're saying even if you're a Zionist and you believe in dina the malchus the dina being a, a, applicable there, and yet, even if a guy should go more to do it, we would have to give up their life rather than go to the army. As Rambam says. The Easter Zeh Koyal Gam Sheris Umi. Even the uh, national service that they did instead of the army was also included in this. Let's take a look. It doesn't have any actual signatures on it, but uh, it's, it's sort of a reiteration of the original psak. Uh, back to Vayal Moshe. Avo, and turn the page now. Heim Enam Shaimim Bekol Moirim. That the uh, Zionists, of course, don't listen to the Poiskim and Umimale Mesagirs Shalahem Barayas, Rahman al Islam. They fill up their Gears, their, their army, with the Aveira of Arayas. The Af the Milchemes Mitzvah, Shehu Bibraisa, the Masechis Saita. Even though, now the Zionists come up with a, an argument, they say, look, the, 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 the mission in Saita says, the end of uh, the parak Meshuch Muhammad, the eighth parak of Saita, it says that by a Mechemist mitzvah, everyone has to go, even a chasim echedrai v'kala mechupasa. And this whole parsha in the Torah and Shoftim that says that me. But we were never in war. She heard about Aliyah. Wait a second. Yeah, yeah. yeah, wait a second. Me yeah. ho'ish, Asher, Eiras, Isha, who just got married, should go back to his house and, uh, and not die in the war. And then it also says that if a person marries a wife for the first year, he's potter from going to the war. So that's all said by Melchemist Rashus. Oh, but Melchemist Mitzvah. So it says that Afilu uh, Chasen has to go out to the war. Afilu Kala. Even the Kala goes out from the Chuppah. Uva Rambam Perak Zayin Mehilchis Molachim. The Rambam brings it down Perak Zayin. Shakol Yoytzi Mafil Chasen Mechedrei Vakala Mechupasa. So the Chayyim the Zionists say, Oh, you see, you're allowed to draft girls. So Zakter, no. Kasev Shama Radvaz. The Radvaz, the Mefarish on the side of the Rambam says, the Biura El Rambam she Eina Nashim Yoytzi Bemochama. He says, No. It doesn't mean literally that the, the girls go to war. El B'Masha Amar Kala Mechupasa Hachi Kamar. Kivin Shachasen Yoytzi Mechedrei Kala Yoytzi Mechupasa. It just means that once the chasen leaves and he doesn't go to his, uh, his uh, chasen room, so the kala doesn't go to her chuppah either. They cancel the wedding because let's say they're about to have a wedding and all of a sudden there's a war. It's fine, the chasen goes out to the war and the kala goes out of the chuppah. It doesn't mean that she goes to war. She just doesn't, doesn't uh, go through with the chuppah and the seven days of the mishta. 
The Efsher. It could mean afterwards also, yeah. You could touch it either way. The Efsher did the Milchemist Mitzvah, Hanashim Hayyim Mesapkois Mayim was on the Baalayim. And the Ridvav says the second shot that it could be that they did go out, but they didn't go out to fight, they went out to just supply the, the army with food. You know, even during World War II, Although women were drafted to the army in America, they were forced to go to factories, you know, right. to start, you know, clothes process. So to, 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 to make I mean, although planes, women are drafted, women still war during World War and to force to go to factories. Ad kan l'shoyna, ve'apir sharishin shekasav. This first shot that the rabbi says that they didn't actually go anywhere; they just left the chuppah. So he says, near elafi ani istaiti meduktach b'lashin. I think that we can be medayik this in the lashin of Chazal. Why does the member of Chazal, why is it split into two? It goes to Chassan, goes out of his, his room, and the Kal goes out of the Chuppah. Why doesn't it include them both in one, one uh, expression? The Chassan and Kal leave their room. The Chassan and Kal go out of their Chuppah. But Kivan Shahu and Yinechad, since it's one Indian. El Avadai Hakid Isa Vahakid Isa must be like the first shot in the Advaz, but that doesn't mean that they both go out to war. But it means that the Shahasan Yoitse Mikhad Roy, the Muhammad, the Khasan goes to the war, Aval Kala in the Yoitsis El Mechupasa. She just goes out of her chupa, but Loy Mechadra Al Muhammad. She doesn't go out of her room. She goes back home, she goes to her room and she stays there until the war's over. The Kamash Malam Bazet, and what's the Khidish? What does it have to say this thing about the Kala? The Av Sha'al Yidei Yitzhi Es HaChassan L'Milchama Even though the fact that the Chassan is going to the war is going to, is going to cause that Mispato Yimei HaChuppah It's going to cause that the Yimei The Shiva Yimei HaMishta Will become Batal Shalakala So it's a right, he's talking about after the Chuppah, right? He's saying that it's going to be Batal the Shiva Yimei HaMishta, right? Because otherwise he could just get married later But even though you're in the middle of the seven days of the Shavu Brachas And the, the Chassan is going to leave And the Kala will have to leave Ein Mashkichim Bozeh doesn't matter Okay? Even according to the second shot in the Radvaj, the Mesapko Ismailim was on the Baalehim, that they're supplying their husbands with food. It just means they're going to supply their own husbands. Just to come among all the men, in especially if they have to carry a weapon, there's no heter for a, for a woman to do that. Even by an obligatory mechal. Well, you just want to just say, if the Zionists already want to draft women, you know what it shows me? How, in what danger they're really in. Because in the Soviet Union, we know when the Nazis, you know, invade the Soviet Union and were causing havoc, eventually they drafted women and children to the army. They did. Huh? Of course, they drove the Nazis out, but they had to draft women and children. Out of desperacy. So you right. Show us how desperate. The Nazis killed 25 million people in two years in the Soviet Union. Wow. Because he said, uh, so to me, it shows how desperate Zionists really are. If they're so desperate, they're even drafting women. The Russians are doing it because they needed it. The Zionists are doing it because they want. But he's to, saying the Zionists. Change. I think because they're desperate. That's they want why. Change. Okay. Yeah. There's two ways to look at it. You're right. For what? For, 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 for to beat the Arabs. I don't think so. I think they're doing it to ruin the people. I mean, to no, you know, to. But I th- the, the, the army is used as a melting pot. To, to you're right, but still, no, you they're desperate because, because. So now we're getting into the second Easter of a lady going to war, which has to do with the Easter of wearing a leyak kli gever al isha, which is Arayos, so which it's is uh, wearing weapons on a, on a isha is considered leyak kli gever al isha. So this is what he's about to bring now. The cost of her Rabbi Avram ben Ezra, the Ibn Ezra, Parshas Tetzay, al cost of leyak kli gever al isha. That why was this pasuk written here in Parshat Kiseitze? Because Parshat Kiseitze starts out. Mm-hmm. So uh, he says, mm-hmm. We'll see in a minute what the v'chulu is. Mm-hmm. If she goes out among men, that she'll come to be mizana with them. That that's the derech that Hashem knew already that when people are at war they have a yetsahar for for a rice. That's why the whole parsha was said there. Kiseit say the it says yifas uh, toyar. Uh, there's a hetter of yifas toyar because dibra toyar can get yetsahara. So obviously there's a yetsahara. If they're going to be ladies in the army, this is what's going to happen. Just to add on to that, that the shvichus dumim you know, is shy to gil erag. You can see they're both in the same category. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you're going to be violent. That's going to actually lead to Arayos. So, so you see, violence leads to Arayos. Turn to page 6 in yeah. the seats. I have the Ibn Ezra here. A moment. Because, yes, Shvikos and Giraj are very much connected. Lo yakli geber, nismecha ba'avur tseis l'mokhama ki ho'isha lo'i nivreis ki im lo'haki mazera. 
that the Isha was created in order to, to have children. So there's and a Yetzir, course, yeah, that, that's yes. why, he's explaining why there's a Yetzirah. That's why there was, that Hashem created the Yetzirah in the first place, that the women yeah. should have children. The Im, he takes their Ima Nashim, the Mucham, if she's going to be in the war with the men, Tova B'derach Lidei Znus. Okay, so the, he, and he's explained that's the pshat in lo yekli gever. That's really the main focus. Lo yekli, yekli gever. It also, of course, it also covers wearing a, a suit and a tie. But the main Which reason nowadays. <laughs> the main reason why in pants. But the main reason why the Torah gave the Isser, lo yekli gever is because they don't, the Torah doesn't want a lady going to war and, and having a, a rifle. Back to Vayel Moshe. The gears kaze. This kind of drafting of girls who gam sakana atzumu leklal Yisrael. That besides being in a, in a veil of Gilei Arayas, it's causing a sakana to the Jewish people. Kasher hei da kasev, because the Torah says, Ki yire b'cha ervas dover v'shav miyacharecha. That by a muhammad, if there's anything that's wrong there, anything that's in a veil, even a, a person who has an aver, he doesn't toivel himself there, the Pasuk in, uh, in Kisait say, Hashem will see ervas dover v'shav miyacharecha. He'll stop helping your army. You can't be menatseach in a war. You can't win a war with Hashem's help. If Hashem's shechina is taken away from there. The only way to win the war would be the way that the Rebbe held that the Israelis won their war, which is through the Sitra Achra. That it's the Satan is given a tremendous power to help the Sionim in order to convince people to follow them. To bring them into an Isayan. But this kind of a, a, a victory is only temporary. As we see, you see that today, that the Israelis, after all their victories, they're not living a good life there. They're not uh, succeeding in peace. Uh, for the, the, the rest of time, in other words, this t- victory will be temporary. You'll get, okay, fine, 67, you'll win, you'll get all the territories, but in the end, you'll have to have Rahmanas from Hashem in order, to, in order to stay alive. So you'll never really get anywhere with these victories from the, from the Sitra Achra. So therefore, to have girls in the army, to have a Gila Yerbais is a, is a big sakana. Okay, Gam Roiv Kibbutzehem, most of the kibbutzim, besides the army, but just look at the kibbutzim of the Zionists, Hema Bir Buvia Shal Gilei Arayis, Mamash. That they're run based on a, a, a sheet of Gilei Arayis, they keep the, they don't have uh, real marriages there, and uh, they, 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 don't, they, don't, they don't raise the kids as, as separately boys and girls, they make them Davka not, they make them try to, like, they try to, they try to, like, uh, de- the uh, whatever they try to like take take out the right and they 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 try to like uh, raise them without any understanding of what uh, it means to be tzniyistic and what it means to be a girl. You know, just to add on to this, uh, you know, children are raised away from their parents. Oh. By the way, in the kibbutzim, wow. they they don't even let them see their parents except like once even a week. Even today, I think it's, it's, it's yeah. changing today. No, but they give up on yeah. right. uh, last week's part, I want to say the kama chukim beknesses. Many laws that were passed by the Israeli Knesset, Shehem Gilei Arayis Mamash. That these laws are real Gilei Arayis. The Ein Laharich was there, but we can't go on at length to, to detail them all. Ki Yadua Shekol Asifoy Sehem. All the gatherings of the Tzioyim, Upuuloy Sehem, and all their actions, Hema Betaruvois Meguna. They're all done with um, a, a mixture of men and women. Ve'al Yodam Malo Ha'aret Zima. And because of that, the land, Eretz Yisrael, is full of Zima, full of, uh, of Znus, Rachman of Mitzlan. Now, just to talk about Gius Bonus a little bit more, I brought down some more Mar Maklemis here. Take a look quickly, page 7. Um, this is the mission in Soite. The Rebbe only brought the Radvaz, so I, I looked around to see if the Tzioyim have anything to stand on with Gius Bonus. So take a look, the, the mission in Soite, Tferes uh, Yisrael on the Mishnah, Kalami Chupasa, the last words in the Mishnah there. Kalami Chupasa, he says, Isha lav bas Muhamma. It doesn't really mean that the Isha goes to Muhamma. Rak lasapik mazan. Only to supply food to the soldiers. Ula sakin adrachim. Or to prepare the roads. Afi yoyt says, for that she goes out. So it's similar to the Radvaz's second shot. Okay? Um, Wait, so did Kasher say anything against us or... Uh, so we're going to look in a second. Else? I looked around. I tried to find... Kasher is not the one who would talk about this because I don't think he held up Gius Bonus. But... Um, Take just one more page here. The Rishash on the Mishnayis. Yeah. Rishash has, a, has the problem also. The Kalam Yichupasa. Mashma de Gam Nashim Yoyz is the Muhammad. The Chiddushu. It's Mashma that women fight in the war, and that's a Chiddush. The Ulai Enam Yoyz is El Lavashal of the Lefois. 
He says the same terrors that they go out to cook and bake and make food for the soul. Yeah, even like, even like the Romans had this way, you know, when they do their conquest, even they had little, you know, with them, you know, to cook for, for the legions. Even the Romans had this. Now, turn to page 10. Yeah. I found this page by Rabbi Shlomo Yosef Zevin, uh, who talks about Gius Bonus here. And he comes up with some, he, some uh, people who were matir it. Take a yeah. look. He says like this: El the, the source to be matirid is the chinuch. The sefer chinuchs bechol mitzvah sheyesh lam kesher muhama. All wars, all mitzvahs that have to do with wars, the chinuch ends off with a with a general statement: Who is chayiv? Who is potter? So he says: Mesayim tamid v'noy heges mitzvah zu b'scharim. He says the mitzvah only applies to men. Shehei maruim lemuhama. Milvad b'mitzvah aches, except for one mitzvah: hachrim tachrimim. The mitzvah of, of the shiva amamim. He says, "Shekost of shenoi heges b'scharim uven the kevah." But that's the term It's not. It's not. It's not. Uh, you know. The by the way, it's interesting thing that by Parsha Zacher, yeah, the women. A lot of women go to shul, but the chinuch choyer holds not because the chinuch says that only men uh, are chayiv in, in, in the mitzvah of mechavas uh, yeah. amalek. Over here, by the shiva amamim, he says, "Shenoi heges b'scharim uven the kevah." So, what's the difference between amalek and the shiva amamim? That here he's saying it's "Shenoi heges b'scharim uven the kevah." So he goes on here and he brings down Rabbi Yosef Ber Salavechik, the Sefer Ayoyvel, the cover of the Rav Leventhal. Look down on the second paragraph near the end. He says, Shnei dinim, b'melchemes mitzvah yesha din shal hachrim tachrimim, oi machoi timcha, she be'etzim ena shaykh klala mochama. That there are two dinim. There's a din mochama, which doesn't apply to women, but there's also a din that has nothing to do with mochama, just a din hachrim tachrimim, to kill them. And that even women are chayven. Can be bored by Rambam. Vyesh gam chaloisim dinim shel mechama. The whole lamdas shtikel here. He says vachinach soiver shenoshim peturis and mukaz mechayvus mechama. They're they're parted from war. Avo benegel lechayvus and mitzvah atzma. Then that they're chayven. But it's still so. And that's what it means. Shahakol yoytzim ba'filu kal mechupasa. But we were before me. The chal goes out to cook for the men, not to fight. All right, but so appar- he's apparently he's learning. He's trying to fit. Yeah, but he's sneaky. This. Uh, J.B. Salvechik, he's trying to fit that the Mishnah but, but means... He's, he's sneaky like Kasher. Kalamei uh, Chupasa means that they fight in a certain way. Not necessarily in a war, but, but they still, fight... He's, he's a clever guy. Salvechik supported the case? Uh, I don't know what, historically what he held about these yeah, bonds. Where, where is... Sure, it's a good question. Do you know that we supported this he, he, Well, he says it's in a Sefer HaYoyvel. It's in like a, a memorial book. A book that's the, for celebrating the 50th year of Rav Leventhal. Uh, Philadelphia Tafresh Tadikei. This is 1935. It was a long time ago, before the Medina even existed. So yeah. he's, he's not even talking, he's talking, about the he's talking yeah. in theory, yeah. not talking about the Medina. Mm-hmm. I don't know if, if J.B. Salvation had any position no, on Gius Bonus. You, you, no, you I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I don't but you write in this book that like he the one who condemned the Satman Rebbe when he said it's Mass and Satan when everybody else was condemning it, right? Right. So in 1967, he came out with a surprising statement. He said that, you know, the Satman Rebbe came to America, everybody became more religious, right. including myself. So he said, don't, don't be so quick to knock what the rabbi says about the Tzioinim. Good, sir. He said that that's a quote? That's a quote, yeah. Rabbi Meisel told me the quote. I don't know if it's printed anywhere okay. until I printed it. You know. But, yeah. okay. You printed it where? It's in the rabbi book. It's in the book? Yeah. Uh, I don't, I think so, yeah. I think the Makar is written there. Every, everything I say there has a Makar. The okay. Um, so this is a new sugi now. Gili arise is one thing, but now the Medina has a lot of blood on its hands. They're the cause of the six million, as the Rebbe explained in other places, but we're not going to go into that now. And he says, "Vegam me oz biadata," and from then until now, neregu harbe revolves me Israel from. The the Hakamas of Medina until today, until the writing of this sefer, which is 1959, uh, many many tens of thousands of Jews were killed because of the Medina. Biglal harayin hatamei azeh because of this tamei idea shall Hakamas Medina becherav of Yisroel Basar of establishing a state by force of arms. Terem shigi hazman mei Hakadosh Baruch Hu before the zman of Hakadosh Baruch Hu comes. The heima mufkarim umafkirim es klal Yisrael. They are. Hefker the people, they don't care, and they put Klal Yisrael in danger because of their own pride, Shalahem, that they want to win a war. Kamasha Kosov Ramban Beparshas told us, the Ramban brings in, says in Parshas told us that this is how Esav thought. He says, 
that you know Esav, the Pashup Shad is the, the Pasuk means that Esav, when he stole the Bukhar to Yaakov, he was by Yves Esav is a Bukhar. But the Ramban learns, no, it's coming to explain the background that why did Esav sell the Bukhar? Because anyway Esav was Mavasa the Bukhar. Because anyway Esav didn't care about his Bukhar. Because what's a Bukhar? Bukhar means that when the father dies, he gets Pishnaim, he gets double portion. So Esav said, I'm not going to outlive my father anyway. Esav knew he had a dangerous uh, occupation and he's going to die anyway. He'll probably die in his father's lifetime. That a seal, a Russia, only thinks about now, he doesn't care about later. So therefore, Esav didn't care about uh, the Bukhar. That's what the Ramban says. That's why Esav sold the Bukhar, because he didn't care about it anyway. Oh, but you just add further that you see Esav openly showed how he hates Bukhar another way. Yaakov, you know, said to Esav. Gam bekibush Sinai sheisparu boy shahayu nisim. That the Zionists are proud to say that during the Sinai campaign there were there were nisim. Loy also be yadam el amasha oilichu harbe Yisrael mi Yisrael lahariga. That the only thing they accomplished with the Sinai war was that they killed a lot of Yidden in the war. Loy al pi das Torah. Not according to the das Torah. El al pi das minim. That it was minim who decided on the war. And uh, the shaf chudam, and they, they spilled blood, and they didn't accomplish anything. The nidal delu, not only did a lot of soldiers lose their lives, but also the nidal delu chamishim alafim mi Yisrael toishfei mitzrayim. That 50,000 Egyptian Jews lost their uh, source of a living. They, they, the government uh, almost forced them out of the country, but it persecuted them a lot after that. Shahayu yoishim sham. That the Egyptian Jews were living there in peace up to that point. There were some of them who were very rich until that war. And also, they caused a lot of, of other dangers to, to the Jewish people during that war. We're going to talk about it in a minute what that was. But with the mercy of Hashem on Klal Yisrael, b'schus Hashem reitoyu mitzvus, and with the schus of those people, those erlich yidden who fight against Zionism, shaloch mi mimatzion b'mesiris nefesh, nistabev me'am mistabev kol asibus. So the cause of all causes, Hashem caused shehuchuchu lahafsi kamilchama that they were forced to back off from what they conquered. V'lisa gachar mikol mashalakhu. The, the Eisenhower got involved and he told them, if you don't go back, then we're going to kick you out of the UN. We're going to see in a minute what that means. Yeah, and because of that, the whole uh, danger calmed down. And the, the whole danger from the, from, the, from the Russians, that's what he really means, and I'm going to see in a second, that, that, uh, that uh, disappeared. If the Zionists would have accomplished what they wanted, they would have kept Sinai, and they would have gone further into Egypt and taken the Suez Canal, it would be a Sakana not just for their army, but for all the Yidden and Eretz Israel from the Soviets. That they said themselves, that there were Nisim for all the Yidden and Eretz Israel at that time because the threat of, uh, of nuclear destruction was averted. So therefore, let's see, if there was really a Ness, that the Tzioyim say, yeah, there was a Ness and we were saved, so let's see, why, who, who brought them in this, into this Sakana that they needed a Ness? They didn't rely on a Ness. First of all, First of all, if they believe in Hashem, they believe in Nisim, they know that there's a, the Torah says, you're not allowed to be so much on a Ness. And, 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 if, and if you just let me finish, and if you don't believe in Nisim, then you for sure can't be so much on a Ness. So, whether you believe in it or you don't believe in it, you're not being so much on a Ness. And on to yeah. this, that the Pelio just says on this, that whoever relies on a miracle and danger should learn from the big tzaddikim. Moshe Rabbeinu fled, Dava Melech fled, Eliyahu and Navi fled. So you see, even, even Moshe was the Greek who ever lived, who ran away from Pharaoh and never came back to Mitzrayim until he told right. him to come back. And even by a mitzvah, it says, Hecha de Shechia Chazeka, Shani. You know, even can't be Moshe Chal- was arguing with Hashem because, with the because like Moshe was sure he still can't put his life in danger when going back to Mitzrayim because he still know Pharaoh going to want to kill him when he comes back. So therefore, those who believe in Nisim, they know that, that we don't rely on Nisim. Especially if it's not just your own danger, but it's a danger to the whole Jewish people. So therefore, anyone who brings in, them into such a war, anyone who brings them into a war is like a murderer. 
So Ben Gurion and Dayan and all the people who 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 started that war, they were all murderers. So that's if they would believe in Nisim. But even if you don't, but but here they don't believe in Nisim at all. So well, they sure not being fully believe in them. So what did they rely upon? So what did they rely upon then? Why did they go into the war? They relied on the fact that they were uh, in an alliance. Shehem Kusharim Malche Adirim. That they had a, an alliance with England and France. That was the Suez Sinai War. That they had a plan together with uh, England and France to, to invade, the, that the Israelis would invade the canal, and then the, Brit- the British and the French would come in and separate the combatants, and they would take the canal away from Nasser. That was the whole purpose there. So, Shehem Kusharim in Malchay Adirim, but Siruf Harbam Uzroim, with the combination of their own power, Neged Ho'aravi and Machalashim, against the Arabs who were weak. Even though they knew the Arabs were taka weak, but the enemies, the Russians who were supporting the Arabs, they were taka the 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 powerful one of the most powerful countries in the world. But the way of these Zionists who don't care any about these things is They bring the Jews into great sakana avur sofik nitzuach shall cover the sarah just because they might get some type of, uh, of uh, victory and get some covet out of it. Ugadula, Shah Samach Mem Miyatsam, that the Samach Mem gives them this aid to the do. Kashay Vesi Kain Zemeh Ramban, as he just brought, the Ramban says that uh, Esav's whole thing was, was, uh, was for now, for his whole, for his whole uh, uh, pleasure of, of right now. But however, the reason why the Jews were saved during the Sinai War was it was a chesed from Hashem. They had to stop the war, and to go back and completely from everything that they conquered. That in the last few days of the war, that the war was going on, that the enemies thought, the Russians decided, they decided not to physically go into a war. That they'll be yoytze by giving a, a warning without actually, without actually going into a fight. That was the next that happened. That, that was the attack that took place. That was the reason why the rest of the, the Yidin and Eretz Yisrael were saved. Okay? But the Samach Mem convinced people that there was really a, a, a Nes that happened, to the war of the Minim, in order to convince people to follow them, to get people to follow the, the uh, Minim. I'll just finish up the sim and then we'll look at the history. Hachi kara zeb b'shem kibush Sinai. So the Rebbe says the he borrows the 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 lashon from. So uh, you're doing the word Hashem even is. We, we, yeah. Okay. He borrows the lashon from from Yaakov Avinu. Esav. Esav said Hachi kara shmo Yaakov is the is 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 he called Yaakov means he's taka called Yaakov for a good reason, not the reason that you thought, but rather for the reason that I'm saying now. By Yaakveni zeh pamaim. So here the Rebbe says a similar word. That they think it's called Kibbutz Shinai because they were conquering the Sinai Desert. But he says, no. They didn't conquer anything. That that's what they're really conquering. The Zionists start conquering what was given at Sinai, which is the Torah. Yeah, we don't the whole the Torah that was given at Sinai. The Torah gave us no location. You know what I just want to say? All these maps that people make of where Jews were, they're not accurate. We weren't told where they even are. Feed them where yeah, that's true. Yeah, exactly. true. And because these religious Jews support the Zionists and they say, yeah, there were Nisim and everything, that's why the, the, these, these Mufkarim, these Hefkardika people, are given power over the Jews. And they put all Jewish lives in danger, the goof of Nefesh, physical and spiritual danger, the Sakonis at Sumos Chashashalm, the great Sakonis. Okay, now, so turn to 11. This is Benny Morris's book, Righteous Victims. Hey, you want to recommend this book to me, right? That it's a very good book it's, about. It's Jews very right? fair, yeah. It's yeah, very, he writes a lot about Israel in 1940. Middle of the road book. It doesn't yeah, doesn't take objective. sides. So he says the IDF lost about 190 soldiers killed. Mm-hmm. And he's talking about the Sinai uh, War. He says, in that war, 190 soldiers were killed, 20 captured, and 800 injured in the Sinai campaign. And what? What for? For nothing. They went in, they went out, 
didn't get anything for it. The Egyptian army lost several thousand killed and much of its equipment. Some 4,000 Egyptians fell into Israeli hands. Okay. Um, then later on, he brings over here on the other side, on November 5th, both Israel and Egypt had accepted the UN demand for a ceasefire, substantially undercutting the Anglo-French invasion even before it had begun. The following day, Soviet Prime Minister Nikolai Bulganin sent Eden, Malay, Ben-Gurion, and Eisenhower threatening messages. The letter to Israel was particularly menacing. Israel's attack on Egypt was sowing a hatred for the state of Israel among the peoples of the East, such as cannot be cannot but make itself felt with regard to the future of Israel and which puts in jeopardy the very existence of Israel as a state. Basically, he's threatening that uh, if they don't stop the invasion, he's going to mix in. And the Russians, of course, uh, had nuclear weapons at that time. And if you turn the page again... I think he's called the New Historians, right? Yeah, if you turn the page again... Uh, even one day after that, Ben-Gurion still didn't back down. And he said on November 7th, Ben-Gurion declared... This is the famous victory speech that Ben-Gurion made. He said, the, the 1949 armistice agreement with Egypt was dead and that Israel would permit no UN force to be stationed in its territory. But that's what the world was asking. Uh, America and Russia were asking them to back down and say, we'll put a, a UN force in the Sinai Peninsula. And Ben-Gurion said, no, we don't allow any UN force there in any part of the Sinai and the Gaza Strip that it occupied. A few hours later, the UN General Assembly passed a resolution calling for the immediate withdrawal of three invading armies from Egypt's soil. The vote was 65 to 1. Did the Zionists believe the Sinai desert was in Egypt? What did you say? The Zionists believe the Sinai desert is in Egypt? It, they, they believed that what? That the Sinai desert is in Egypt? So because they're 65 to 1, right? 65 yeah. nations against one state of Israel voted that they should uh, get out of the soil. Herbert Hoover Jr., acting U.S. Secretary of State, threatened that his government would cut off all public and private aid to Israel, there would be U.N. sanctions, and Israel would be expelled from the organization, expelled from the U.N. And President Eisenhower had just been elected to a second term. He could allow himself to ignore Jewish lobbying. Um, and so basically they had to back down. And turn the page. I have another book here. by This is by O'Brien. It's called The Siege. History of Israel. Pretty. Who was uh, the first Jewish writer? The first one was Righteous Victims by Benny Morris. Who was the full name? Connor Cruz. Connor Cruz O'Brien, yeah. O'Brien makes it sense. He's an uh, Irish delegate to the UN who witnessed all these things and he wrote a, a book about uh, yeah. basically the whole history of the Medina. O'Brien quotes him. Yeah, he's, he's the, siege? the siege. He's a pro Israel guy, yeah. and he, but, he, but he brings this down just to show how dangerous things were in 1956. He says, um, President P P Premier Bulganin Bul was brandishing the Soviet Union's newly acquired missiles. On November 5th, he sent Israel a note saying that Israel's actions places in question the very existence of Israel as a state. That was the one that uh, uh, Benny Morris quoted. Then he says like this, on November 6th in Paris, the U.S. ambassador informed Premier Guy Moulet that a threatened Soviet attack on Britain and France would lead to U.S. retaliation. You hear? He said that if the U.S. will, if the, if the Soviet Union attacks Britain and France, then the, then the U.S. will mix in and they'll attack in retaliation, but not Israel. He says the conspicuous omission of Israel, according to Michael Brecher, was not unknown to her decision makers. On November 7th, the CIA leaked a report attributed to U.S. Ambassador Bolin in Moscow that the Kremlin intended to flatten Israel on the following day. So this is what would have happened if they would have kept on uh, with holding on to, holding on to uh, Sinai. And then uh, O'Brien speculates that if Stalin would have been alive at that time, then he would have really done it. What was this work? What was Sinai um, It's 1956. Yeah. Okay, now one more page. Just look at the next thing. It says, uh, he says that uh, Herbert Hoover Jr., uh, Under Secretary of State, said that Israel's attitude will lead to the most uh, severe measures uh, serious measures such as the termination of all U.S. governmental and private aid, U United Nations sanctions, and eventual expulsion from the U.N. Hoover also warned that if Israel's non-withdrawal led to Soviet penetration of the Middle East, Israel would be the first to be swallowed up. So basically, the U United States distanced itself from the, from the Tsiang and, and the Soviet Union threatened them, and that was the danger that the Reb is talking about in this whole sim when he says that the Tsiang, Ho'ayn Nebet Sad Ho'aravim, are, uh, are they, they, almost, uh, they almost wiped out the Yidden there at Israel. The Chesed was that they decided not to do that. They decided just to, 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 to leave it at threats and nothing more than that. 
And that, that was the nest that the Tzionim painted as a whole nest that they were zaycha to, when in reality they were the ones who brought the Yidin in the Sakana to begin with.